Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you all exactly what I have in my fridge and pantry. But before we get started, I just want to clarify a few things. First of all, I am a vegan and I would say that I am a high carb, low fat vegan and I also try to eat a mostly plant-based diet. So I don't really have a lot of processed food in my house and I also don't cook with a lot of extra salt or oil, so you're not going to see that in my pantry either. Second of all, I just moved into this apartment this last weekend, so this is sort of a stocking up sort of what's in my pantry thing. So you'll see that my pantry is pretty full right now just because I bought as many things as I could so I don't have to go grocery shopping as frequently for some of my more staple items. And finally, I just wanna put in a little bit of an extra disclaimer. Some of you may not know, but I also have an Instagram account. It's from my bowl and that is primarily a food-based account. So to be completely honest with you guys, I do receive some products for free from food companies. So this is technically not my complete pantry. I do have a lot of other little tidbits and samples from different companies, but I just wanna show you guys a more realistic haul for someone who is transitioning to veganism or is trying to eat healthier and incorporate more plant-based foods in their diet. So I'm not gonna include most of those items. Some of the items you will see I have been gifted, but I use them all really frequently. That's why they're in my main pantry, because I do have a little storage area in my room where I keep extra stuff. Also, I will admit some of my things are in plastic, and I do buy some things in plastic, but I am trying to be more conscious about that and using the bulk bins more frequently. And finally, I just want to say this is not to brag in any way. I'm just trying to make a helpful video for you guys. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so now we're in my kitchen. Sorry the lighting isn't as good, but that's just what it's gonna be for the rest of the video. Also, I forgot to mention that some of my areas are going to look a little empty because I am living with one other person, so she's going to be taking up some of these areas. She just hasn't moved into the apartment yet. So, since I'm standing right here, I thought we could get started on my freezer. I actually don't have a lot in my freezer right now. All I have is a bag of frozen bananas, and then I got some jumbo frozen bags of peas and corn. Those are staples for me. I eat them several times a week. Sometimes I'll buy frozen green beans. I don't really like frozen broccoli, so I don't buy it very often, but yeah. Okay, and then finally, this is just something weird that I saw in the grocery store that I thought I would try. It's these fruit pulps. They're really cheap. I feel like it could be a cheap alternative to buying frozen fruit, but this one is guava. And this one is mango, but I used some of it this morning actually, so it's just in a little freezer baggie. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through my fridge. Um, I have the bottom shelf, so I'll go through that in a second, but first I just wanted to go through some of the condiments that I keep stocked that I use regularly. Um, I always have a plant-based milk. Personally, I like almond milk. I also like the almond and coconut blend as well. I have some organic ketchup. This is my favorite brand. And then so I have some miscellaneous like condiments. I have an oil-free fig balsamic um, vinaigrette for salads. Then I have some jalapeno relish. The label's a little ripped, but it's good. I have some horseradish. I have some hoisin sauce. I used it for a recipe once, that's why I still have it. But it's kind of like a teriyaki sauce, I guess, but you have to keep it in the fridge. And then I have some unopened um, barbecue sauce. It's chipotle flavored. I just haven't broken into it yet, but I use barbecue sauce a lot with potatoes and I have this better than bouillon. It's like an alternative to vegetable broth cubes. And then finally, my mom just gave this to me. I've actually never used it to be honest, but I have some organic yellow miso paste, but I've been wanting to get miso to try it out. So thanks mom. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the actual fridge and it's all pretty much plants. Okay, so this is everything that I have in my fridge right now. It's actually not that much but I'm just gonna go through this drawer first. It's all like fruit, so I have some apples, and I have two lemons and four limes, because I think they're good to add to recipes, and then I just have a bag of medjool dates, and then for the fridge part, I have a variety of items. I always have greens in my fridge. Greens are so important to eat. Um, I always have a bag of spinach, and then I had some heads of romaine lettuce here, then I have some Baby Bella mushrooms, a giant bag of carrots, a head of cauliflower. These are some ears of corn. I just shuck them ahead of time because I don't like doing that very much. There's just some leftover guacamole from Chipotle. It's looking a little sad. 
This is um, like one fourth of a red bell pepper. I just didn't need it all. This is just tomato paste. It came in a can, but I always buy the bigger cans because it's cheaper and I just store the extra in my fridge. These are some black beans that I made in my instant pot. They were dried. And then this is just a gigantic vat of chili that I made. I'm planning on freezing some so I'll have easy meals later. And my fridge is beeping because it's been open for too long. And then also I just have a little bit of fruit in this bowl. I have four mangoes, one papaya, and I also have an avocado. So I bought a box of bananas. So this is 40 pounds of bananas. They're actually getting ripe enough so maybe I can start freezing them. I always buy them in bulk usually just because it's easier and I go through a lot of them. I just got it from my local grocery store. You just have to ask the people and they'll usually give one to you. But yeah, I should probably freeze these soon. They're like perfectly ripe right now. And I'm not gonna get into this very much, but I just briefly wanted to show you my spice cabinet. Most of them are right here. And then I have a little more up there. But I feel like I could talk about that for a whole video. So if you want a what's in my spice cabinet video, let me know. And then this is my pantry. Um, I will say that this is a little crazy for one person, but I have accumulated all of this over the span of like, four years or so, so definitely don't feel like you have to buy all of these things at once. And some of the stuff you don't even need, I just like to use it as smoothie bowl toppings, but it's definitely not essential. So the top shelf is what I would consider like my essentials. They're more dry grains that I use for savory cooking. So in this sort of corner, I have pasta. Uh, this is actually a chickpea pasta. It's gluten-free. I just like the taste of it personally. I like gluten as well. I also have a red lentil pasta, and then there's some more lentil pasta and chippy pasta back there. I just have so much of this that I don't buy regular pasta. And then here I have some more grains. This is some quinoa. I also have a little bag of amaranth, and then like a really small amount of, I think it's couscous, like pearl couscous. I don't eat that very often. I just kind of like have it. I don't really know why. And then next to that, I have cans of dried beans. I recently bought a pressure cooker, so I'm going to start making beans on my own because I think it's cheaper that way, and then that way there's no added salt. Um, this is just a bag of black eyed peas. And then I have these mason jars. These are green split peas. These are dried chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Then I have some black beans, which I probably eat the most frequently, and I have some red lentils as well. I really like these as well. They're really good in like curries, and yeah. And then finally, in this last corner, I just have rice over here. I like jasmine rice, so that's the only rice I really buy. This is just a big bag of white jasmine rice. Then I also have a bag of brown jasmine rice. This one's from Trader Joe's. Finally, I have some black rice. I don't eat this very often. It just is like, it makes a cool sushi picture. I don't know if I would consider this essential, but I have it, so I'm showing it to you. Okay, I just moved the tripod a little closer, so that way it'd be easier for me to show you things. So this next shelf is mostly granola. Um, in this corner, I have peanut butter because I really used to be obsessed with peanut butter, so I actually have quite a lot of it, but I don't really eat it very much anymore, so it just kind of sits there or it's going to sit there. Um, I have blackstrap molasses right here, which is really good to take. A lot of people don't like the taste, but I like it. I also have some vitamin B12, um, because all vegans and everyone actually should supplement B12. A lot of meat eaters are B12 deficient as well. And then I do have tahini here. This is probably the like nut butter or more fatty spread that I use the most, so I will put time aside for that just to let you know. And in this section, it's all stuff that I put on top of my banana ice cream in the mornings. Um, these are some caramelized bikinis. They're actually from Australia. My friend sent them to me. They're from Loving Earth, but you can't get them in the United States, so they're like treasured. This is a little sample from a small company, but these are my two favorite granolas um, and granola companies. This is actually toasted muesli. It's by Michelle's Granola. I really love this stuff. I also have their cherry chocolate granola, and then this one back here is their ginger hemp granola. Then another brand that I really like is Purely Elizabeth. I have their blueberry hemp granola, their pumpkin fig granola, and then this is a chocolate sea salt granola that also has vegan probiotics added to it, which is kind of cool if you're into that. 
And then this last shelf is mostly miscellaneous smoothie toppers as well. Um, I do have some more like savory things over here. I'm a big drag nutritional yeast because I add this like on pasta, chili, stir fry, like everything. I have some raw buckwheat groats. I use these by themselves as a smoothie topper, but I also like to cook them. You can cook them like oatmeal. So it's a good alternative and they are gluten free as well. So if you want to try something new out, I would suggest that. And then back here, I just have some ground flax seed. It makes good egg substitutes in baking. But to be honest, I don't use that very often. Then the rest of this stuff is really just like smoothie toppers, to be honest. Uh, I have shredded coconut. This is a mixture of different superfoods. There's like chia seeds, hemp hearts, almonds, cranberries in it. And then I have some cacao nibs. They're a good healthy alternative to chocolate chips. They are a little more bitter, but personally I like that because I like dark chocolate anyways. Um, and then here I have some miscellaneous dried fruit. I have dried mulberries, they're really good. I have a little bit of dried jackfruit, some dried cranberries, and some goji berries. Oh, I have a little bit of shredded coconut. It's like larger chips over here. I should probably put that there. And then I do have some chia seeds over here. They're just white chia seeds. But then the rest of this is all sort of powders, I guess. Uh, I also add them to my smoothie bowl. I have powdered peanut butter, which I really like because it's a lower fat content and I just like the texture of it as well. This is actually not the PB2 brand. The brand I use is by Better Body Foods, but this jar is smaller, so I just put it in here. I also have some maca powder, a big thing of spirulina powder that I bought forever ago and will probably last me until I die. This one is a little weird. I have some organic beet powder, but I used to roast beets all the time for my banana ice cream, but then someone sent me this um, organic beet powder and it's the same taste and flavor and you still get the nutritional benefits so I just use this instead, but you can just use regular beets if you don't wanna buy it. And then finally, I have some cacao powder because everybody needs a little bit of chocolate in their life. Oh, I almost forgot. I do have a bag of matcha powder, which is just like ground up green tea leaves for anyone who doesn't know. But that being said, with all these powders, I do wanna say that you don't really need to add superfoods into your diet. If you're eating an abundance of whole plant-based foods, you don't need any extra powders or superfoods. You're gonna get everything that you need, but personally for me, I just like the taste of some of these things, and I also like the pretty colors that they make because they make good Instagram photos. But if you're not like a food blogger, they're really not essential to your life. And if I didn't have them, I wouldn't die either. I just like them, and I like to treat myself by using them, so that's it. And then next to my fridge, I have this tiny cabinet here. I just keep basic uh, cooking essentials and like sauces. So right here, I just have some sweeteners, a bag of coconut sugar, that's my favorite sugar, and then I have some brown rice syrup. I also keep my oatmeal in here. I have both rolled oats and quick oats because I like the texture more of these, but these cook faster if you're in a hurry. But I actually usually combine them and then back here, I'm not gonna pull everything out. I just have an assortment of flours. I have like white flour, whole wheat flour, this is buckwheat flour, coconut flour, and then that's almond meal and tapioca starch. And then if you look up here, the lighting's not very good. I have all of my sauces. So this sauce is a habanero hot sauce. It's very spicy. Um, sriracha because obviously how could someone survive without sriracha I also have this Frank's red hot wing sauce it's um it's more of like a buffalo sauce I don't know I use it sometimes and then here I have liquid aminos which is basically like soy sauce and then behind it I do have a bottle of soy sauce and teriyaki sauce but my arm is too short and then finally over here, I just have vinegars. I have apple cider vinegar, and then I have this balsamic vinegar. And that's it for this cabinet. Okay, and then finally, I swear this is the last area of food. I just have this tiny little cabinet next to my kitchen where I keep some extra things. So this top-in is all cereal because cereal is the best. These are the cornflakes that I use. They're by Nature's Path Organic. They're fruit juice sweetened. Then I have some shredded wheat. This is my favorite cereal ever, also by Nature's Path Organic, Sunrise Crunchy Maple, it's amazing. Then I also have a bag of wheat puffs right in there. And, oh, I have some, also have some 
Sweet Potato Sunshine. I'm finishing this up before I use the Crunchy Maple Sunrise, but it's okay. This is better, but this is a close second. This top shelf is all samples from companies, so I'm not gonna go over it because I don't really think they're essential to your pantry. This shelf right here, I just have some dried fruit. I have some organic raisins and then some dried Turkish figs. But other than that, it's all savory food. I have some emergency cans of beans or some black beans behind it just in case I like don't have time to cook the dried ones. These are some nori sheets for sushi. These are not essential, but they're fun. They're um, glass noodles. They're actually made from sweet potatoes. Then I do have one can of this soup. It's just a lentil soup, but it's vegan, and I just put it over rice if I'm like in a huge hurry. Then over here, I have some popcorn kernels that I like to make my own microwave popcorn with. I have a small bag of dried pinto beans. I have two cans of diced and crushed tomatoes for recipes, and then I also have this other McDougal soup. I don't eat these very often, but again, they're good in emergencies. Over here, I just have some vegan protein powder and maple syrup, but that's not essential to your diet. You don't need protein. I just like it, the taste of it. This is my favorite brand, though. And then finally, in this bottom thing, I just have a bunch of potatoes and onions. So this is a giant bag of white onions. I only really buy white onions. Um, this is a bag of russet potatoes. I think it's 10 pounds. This is a bag of regular yams or sweet potatoes. These are some purple sweet potatoes, and then this is some fresh garlic. So yep, that is everything that I have in my kitchen. I hope you found this video helpful, and again, let me know if you want me to do a what's in my pantry like spice-wise thing, because I think that could be pretty cool. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.